Speaker. Madam Speaker, almost 11 years ago today, I spoke on the anniversary of two Chicago treasures, radio station WXRT and one of its beloved hosts, Lynn Bramer. This weekend, we lost Lynn at the age of 68 after a long battle with cancer. Lynn was a Chicago icon, a poet, a Renaissance man, and a friend. For my colleagues who have not lived in Chicago, let me explain. In the movie Almost Famous, there's a scene where the protagonist's oldest sister has left her record collection, and she tells him, look under your bed, it will set you free. That's what XRT did for us in Chicago, and that's what Lynn did for me and so many Chicagoans. Before XRT, AM radio, a dry, repetitive desert, was our only option for music. After XRT, we were transformed. It became a 24-hour station in 1976, demonstrating our city's unique commitment to independent thinking and an unbridled celebration of art and music. Like many others, XRT linked us to a new world. XRT encouraged me to leave my sterile environment and travel to the Earl of Old Town to see Steve Goodman and my first concert at the Aragon Ballroom to see Mott the Hoople and the New York Dolls, not to mention other famous haunts like the Metro, the Vic, Checkerboard Lounge, to see greats like Iggy Pop, David Bowie, Muddy Waters, Frank Zappa, Roxy Music, and so many others. When Lynn became the music director at XRT in 84, he helped introduce us to new music, new genres, and new emotions. Today, when so much of music is driven by algorithms and data, it can be difficult to imagine a time when a station could often be steered by a single man's eclectic taste, but that's what Lynn did. He played what he wanted to hear, and somehow he always knew what the city needed to hear. He opened my eyes to a, the true power of music. He taught me that music can show you new worlds, can help you understand new perspectives. It can often soothe during difficult times and inspire you to explore what you have never considered exploring before. Lynn Bramer was my friend, but I recognize that I'm far from the only one who could claim that coveted title. He was born a New Yorker and began his radio career filling in his university student-run station during the summer. The first song he ever performed was the Beatles' Within and Without You. Later he would explain that it chose it because I always felt that life flows within you, but most of all, without you. At Albany's WKBQ-FM, he became known as the Reverend of Rock and Roll for his penchant for reciting poetry during song introductions. He claimed he came to Chicago in 1984 to become the music director, and his taste left an indelible mark on the station and on the entire city. He hosted the Morning Drive for more than 30 years, talking to thousands of Chicagoans over the years on their daily commutes. He loved the Cubs, Chicago music, theater, and dining, and shared those loves with us. From when we learned about the best restaurants in the city, we shared in the Cubs' wins and often losses, and gain new perspectives from his essays, Lynn's Ben, a rare combination of nostalgia, humor, empathy, kindness, and spirituality. I was honored to have lunch with Lynn at some of Chicago's most iconic locales like Manny's and Ann Sather's, and, and to have spent a memorable Cubs game at his side. As he himself described, he regularly went out in his eating pants, an outfit with enough give to accommodate another Chicago meal at, sh at places like the Wiener Circle. Last July, he shared with his listeners that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer and began a leave of absence to undergo treatment. This November, I know I wasn't the only Chicagoan who was delighted when he briefly returned to the airwaves. Now, during his time at XRT, he was made music director of the year three times and was voted the music director of the decade by readers of the Hard Report. But he was so much more than a radio host. He was Chicago's best friend in the whole world. When something big happened, Chicago would take turn to Lynn for his take on the events. Whether celebration or tragedy, he knew what to say. Now, in the wake of his loss, we turn to the dial wanting. He was married to his college sweetheart, Sarah, and they shared a son, Wilson. They were both by his side at his final moments. 
My thoughts and deepest condolences are with his family, with all Chicagoans, as we mourn his loss. In closing, as Lynn always reminded us, never take anything for granted. It's great to be alive. I yield back.